Okay, we're going to continue our unit on the Native Americans, now focusing on the Native Americans of the Southwest United States. So here we are, the Southwest states, uh, Arizona, Utah, Colorado, uh, New Mexico into uh, Mexico, this area here. So we're going to examine the Native American cultures of the American Southwest. Okay, early cultures of the Southwest. All right, Hohokums, okay, which in uh, Pima Indian language, means the people who have gone away. I'm worried about why. Okay, they lived in present-day Arizona approximately 3,000 years ago, probably some of the older civilizations uh, in the New World, and then mysteriously disappeared. Okay, uh, they learned to farm in the desert by creating irrigation systems from nearby rivers. So the river, as, um, as you learn, um, Water sources are very, very important. Uh, people cannot live without water to grow crops, uh, to survive, and uh, you're in the desert. So in order to um, uh, survive, you had to make uh, do with the waters you have. So you have um, our rivers going through here, uh, like the Colorado River, very similar to rivers in the Middle East, like in Egypt, the Nile. Uh, you'll see uh, those civilizations use canal systems uh, to irrigate crops, and they rely on the river to survive. Um, and today, in current times, uh, California and this part of the country are experiencing extreme drought. Um, they're not knowing not knowing what to do with water. So uh, you're kind of seeing the similar um, things happening 3,000 years um, into the future here. So these are these um, canal systems that are built to... Um, get water sources uh, where there uh, isn't water before. Okay, a lot of them are still around today. Even in Egypt today, uh, in the Middle East, people still use the canal systems that were built thousands of years ago. So this would be a, um, a platform mound of uh, a civilization that would have been growing up in, uh, or being built in Arizona uh, in extreme heat. So the Anazazis are the ancient ones of the Navajo language. Okay, they farmed in the desert irrigation such as Hohokams. Okay, built large houses called pueblos out of adobe, which are sun-dried bricks. Okay, not a lot of lumber and things around, uh, so they had to make do with what they had in their surroundings. So you'll see they built these uh, buildings and uh, living um, places within, on, underneath giant uh, canyons that are still uh, there today. You can go and visit them if you ever head out west. All right, so I'm gonna give you kind of a, um, uh, oh yeah, Pueblos could shelter hundreds of families at a time, and they did. So uh, if you don't know how to pronounce something, I use this a lot in world history, sometimes in US history, there's a website you can go to called How'd You Say? So it's H-O-W-J-S-A, Y.com, and if you're having trouble pronouncing something uh, with the Native Americans or World History any class, you can use this. So uh, what you do is you type in the word. You have no idea how to pronounce it. You hit the submit. Anasazi or Anasazi. Anasazi. So I told me how to pronounce it in a nice British accent. Let's listen to him again. Anasazi or Anasazi. So this website's a pretty good tool if you're having uh, issues pronouncing things. Um, I use it all the time. Okay, so moving on here. So what's interesting about this civilization, uh, they thrived for uh, many, many years, but eventually all of a sudden kind of died out uh, pretty quickly. So they were called the cliff dwellers. Uh, they built adobe houses along the side of cliffs in order to make them harder to attack. Also probably keep cool in the hot, uh, scorching 100 degree weather here. Archaeologists believe that the Anasazis left the southwest after severe drought or a long dry spell about 800 years ago. Okay, well we're going to watch a quick video dealing with the demise of these cliff dwelling civilizations. <laughs> Could an event that took place 700 years ago in what is now Colorado be an omen of the future effects of climate change? In the 13th century, a climate catastrophe in the American Southwest 
was to change the fate of an entire civilization. This extraordinary settlement in Mesa Verde National Park was home to an ancient Pueblo people, the Anasazi. But something happened here that caused the entire population to abandon the settlements they had worked so hard to build. Geoscientist Jonathan Overpeck from the University of Arizona is hunting for clues to this ancient mystery. The climate was good and the populations expanded. They had many more settlements uh, when they had abundant rainfall and they could grow a lot of uh, food. And when they had good forests um, that were healthy and that could sustain the growth of this society. And then around 1300 AD, uh, they mysteriously abandoned much of what they had built. And we always wondered what caused that abandonment or collapse of the culture they had here. The answer lies in a devastating period of prolonged drought that ravaged the region around a thousand years ago. Vegetation died and crops failed. There was no longer enough food for the communities in Mesa Verde. And it appears that climate played a big role. It appears that it was uh, dry conditions, cold conditions, combining uh, to make it difficult to sustain the large populations that they had built up. The intense pressure for food led to conflict and even warfare as people migrated to more hospitable areas. By the beginning of the 14th century, the Anasazi civilization had collapsed. I think there are uh, some important lessons uh, to be learned from what happened here 700, 800 years ago uh, for modern society. Because what happened back then is the uh, populations were too large to be sustained by the, the smaller amount of resources they had because of the climate change. And that's probably a similar situation that we're, we're coming into now. That's the lesson we learned uh, when we look at these ancient ruins here in the Southwest. Okay, I like how they talk about um, comparing it to today. Uh, some of the faster growing cities in America are in this area of the country today. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, California, Los Angeles. Um, these, uh, these cities now are growing dramatically, huge population growth, not a lot of water out there and experiencing drought. So um, what, what I'd like you to do is maybe think of how, what can we do to maybe um, uh, get more water to uh, the southwest and continue the growth of our major cities out there, or can we sustain ourselves? Uh, what are some solutions to those problems we're going to be facing uh, in the future and the present? Okay, peoples of the Southwest, Pueblos were descendants of the Anasazis. Okay, here are the Pueblos, and they're, later, they're descendants as well. Okay, here's a Hopi uh, woman dressing hair in traditional squash blossom style of an unmarried woman. This is an actual photo from a little over 100 years ago. Okay, Pueblo has built adobe houses and farmed the desert through irrigation. All right, and uh, each Pueblo village had what's called a kiva, which is an underground chamber where men held religious ceremonies. Okay, the Pueblo people were matrilineal. We talked about that in our last uh, lecture. Uh, matrilineal matr matrilineal uh, means that they trace their family lines through their mother, which is different than European um, tradition when you um, typically when women get married they'll change their last name to the mother or to the father or the male last name um, you're seeing that kind of change within modern society of maybe the hyphenated name today and things but uh, matrilineal you're tracing your ancestry through the mother as opposed to the father all right so married men live with the wife's family and coming over there um, Pueblo uh, wives owned most of the family property as well as you see in European society uh, women really didn't have a whole lot of opportunities um, uh, to own property and those things. So uh, a little bit different there in Native American society. The opposite of matrilineal would be patrilineal, which means uh, you trace the ancestry through the father. All right, seeing some uh, pictures. Living in the Kiva. 
All right, the Apache. About 500 years ago, Apache and Navajo appeared in the Southwest. Okay, the Apaches and Navajos were hunters and frequently raided Pueblos fields for food. Okay, the Navajos learned to farm from the Pueblos, and they may wear culhogans, which were houses made of mud plaster over a foundation of wooden poles. So you might see a test question. Um, maybe compare how the people of the north lived compared to the people of the so southwest or the southeast or the no um, or the northwest. Okay, and um, what were their housing like? And you might want to tell me why. Let's just be prepared for that on the test. Okay, Navajo summer here, also in the winter. Okay, the Apache remained hunters and frequently traded buffalo meat and animal skins for corn and cloth. 